Okay, this here is part two of uh, what part of after do you not understand? We're going to look at straight uh, in scripture what Jesus Christ said about, about his coming. Now, I know many of you have heard this before, but we've got to understand something. Some people hear the word of God and don't understand it or they don't receive it. So, you know, just because you might be hearing the word, it don't mean that you're receiving the word. So we're going to go into scripture and take a look at we must believe the words of Christ okay first off we got to understand something is there is not many comings of Christ there's only one coming of Christ and that's what we've got to understand if you if you go to the scriptures you will see that you know very clearly so that's what we're going to try and do here it's proved that there's only one coming of Christ. There's not several, you know. There's not two or three. There's not four or five, six or seven. There's only one more coming of Christ. And that's where a lot of the deception comes in because they believe that there's more than one. If you look at Hebrews 9.28, it says, So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. So Hebrews 9.28 lets us know that there's only one more coming. There is not mentioned anywhere about a third coming. So if we can understand that there's only one coming, and that that, you know, that coming is after the tribulation, we can't separate them and say, oh, well, no, that's, this is when he's in the air. This is when he's you know, put seven foot. No, when, when when Jesus comes in the air, when he comes in the clouds, and we're caught up, we're resurrected in the air. Stop and think about that. We're not going anywhere. Where we're, what's going to happen is we're going to come down upon the mount with him. You know, this is when we're changed, we're caught up, uh, we rise again, we're resurrected. And when this event takes place here, you know, they think we're going to be taken out. No, this is on the last day, so we can't be taken out seven years before. So when we understand that when it speaks about, you know, the coming of the Lord, the day of the Lord, the gathering, being caught up, resurrected, um, rise again, you know, at the last day, at the last trump, when you see this, uh, 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 talks about, you know, um, the mysteries of God should be finished. It talks about, you know, an angel. You know, these are all one and the same event. They're not several different events. So we're going to take a look at, and you know, I really seek in the Lord and pray that your eyes are open to this. Matthew 24, 29, Jesus said, immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the heaven, excuse me, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear the signs of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Now sometimes when we've shared this, some say, oh, it just says from one end of heaven to the other. But if you go to Mark 13, it also says the earth as well too. So we're going to go over to Mark 13, 24. Again, Jesus says, But in those days after the tribulation, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, the stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then, and then shall he send his angels and shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one from the utmost part of the earth to the utmost part of heaven. So we see right there that Jesus says after two different places that he's going to send his angels and they're going to gather gather what? The elect. Who's the elect? From the four winds from one end of heaven unto the other. So we see this happening and Jesus puts it on after all these things. So when you look at Matthew 24 and 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 they and and understand something. They asked Jesus, the disciples asked Jesus, starting with verse 3. He said they said to him they came to him privately and what they said to him was tell us when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of thy coming into the world now Jesus didn't say to them oh well don't worry about it you're going to be raptured out of here you won't be here to see these events he doesn't say that what Jesus does say first thing he says is take heed that no man deceive you for many shall come in my name saying I am the Christ shall deceive many 
And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. See, Jesus is saying the end is not yet. How can we say, if we're saying that Jesus is on his way, we're saying the end's here. No, Jesus said the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in divers places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. He still hasn't mentioned no taking us off the earth or anything, no such thing. It's not there. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. See, we're talking about being killed here. Why would he tell them that if, if we're not going to be here? And then shall many be offended, shall betray one another, shall hate one another, many false prophets shall arise, shall deceive many, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. That word wax means grow, grow cold. But he that is should endure till the end, the same shall be saved. If you're going to be raptured out of here, off this earth, taken off this earth, seven years before the tribulation, as you believe, then have you endured till the end? Because Jesus says in, in Mark, excuse me, Matthew 13, that the harvest is the end of the world. That's when he'll harvest. Let them both grow together. The wheat and the tares, let them grow, grow together until the harvest, till the end of the world. Till the end. Till, till the last day, the end. And then he'll call forth the reapers, the angels, to reap out of his kingdom. See, remember, heaven's coming here. It talks about in scripture, heaven will roll back as a scroll. You know, and heaven's going to come here to the earth. Think about that. Remember the prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. See, when Jesus comes in the clouds, he's not. we're not going to be raptured out of here. He's coming into his kingdom to set up his kingdom to rule with a rod of iron. That's what the word of God talks about. You know, and when he comes, he's going to destroy the wicked with the brightness of his coming, it talks about. So we can't we can't get you know we can't go away from scripture here it is not taught anywhere in the word of God that Jesus comes before the tribulation it is not taught that you're going to be raptured out of here before the tribulation I really pray that you will take the time to read Matthew 24 verses 29 through 31 um, read all of Matthew 24 Mark 13 uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 Revelations chapter 7. Go and look at these things for yourself. Look at Proverbs 10 verse 30. John 17 verse 15. I mean the scriptures go on and on. There's so many of them. Please understand that this is very important that you know this so you can prepare yourself in your household. You know a lot of people ask us why do you waste your time? We don't see this as a waste of time. You know we see this as preparing the body. You know, and that's what that's what this is about. This is why we're we're crying out in the wilderness. This is why we are we are being watchmen to to warn you and saying, "Look, it's coming." You know, that's like having a tornado coming and you pretend like it's not going to come and it's aiming straight for your house. This is what we're trying to warn you. We're blowing the trumpet, trying to warn. It's coming and it's heading straight for you and for us. And we have got to understand something. There is, he's coming after. He's coming after God's people. The Antichrist will be. He says he will make war with the saints. Overcome the saints. And kill the saints. Are you not a saint of God? I hope this has helped. God bless.